morning, everyone. Uh, I am Palavi Ade, and I'm the co-founder of Asian Pathfinders along with Shres Deshmukh. So welcome to another edition of our Fireside Chats, and we are really, really glad to have Mr. Yashwant Kulkarni, who's the founder and MD of Green Water Revolution Private Limited. Uh, it's an ecotech company. Definitely look them up. They're doing some amazing work in the field of helping us manage water pollution. So I think that's one of the major concerns for India. And I think it's really good to see companies like this doing this work. So, and we have Maitri uh, Kuduganti as the moderator, but before I give it to Maitri, just a brief about Asian Pathfinders. So we started in 2020 in the middle of our first wave of COVID. Uh, and uh, the whole aim for us is to be a multidisciplinary dialogue and discussion forum. We do keep our sessions open because, you know, we want the maximum people to benefit from these discussions because we do hold sessions from what we have today, from water pollution to food security, climate change to geopolitics. And definitely all our sessions are on YouTube. So uh, you can definitely check them out and we do encourage people to engage with the community. So uh, the best way to keep in touch with us is through our emails or social media. So you can follow us on uh, all the platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, everything. And you can stay in touch with us if you have any suggestions and feedback for uh, any upcoming sessions that you'd like to see. Definitely reach out to us if you'd like to collaborate. Uh, we are always open to working with different organizations. So please do reach out. And uh, these are shares at my email addresses. You can also write to us. So moving on to today's session, uh, session is on water pollution abatement, challenges from policy to implementation. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, Mr. Yashwant Kulkarni, he is the speaker today and Maitri is, is the moderator. So I'll introduce Maitri. Maitri Kodugandi works as a researcher with the climate team at the India Institute for Human Settlements uh, based in Bangalore, India. She's an alumnus from UNESCO IHE Institute for Water Education. Maitri's work in the last six years focused on climate sciences, vulnerability studies, resource management, gender studies, sustainability, and research into use. Her current research work aims at investigating the implications of urban and peri-urban agriculture on urban sustainability and personal well-being in cities. So over to you, Maitri. Can you hear me? Right. Oh, thank you for the introduction, Pallavi. It's a pleasure to be back here and uh, having to moderate this session. Uh, so very quickly, I will give a few opening remarks and then I will hand over the floor to Mr. Yashwan Kulkarni and then we go from there. Uh, so India has traditionally is it's, it's very well and known for freshwater resources. But increasing population, urbanization, and agricultural growth in the recent decades is causing overexploitation of both surface water and groundwater resources. Now, as consumption of water is growing, the proportion of wastewater is also increasing significantly because of which our water bodies are getting toxic. Now, it is estimated that about 70% of India's surface water in India is unfit for consumption. And every day, almost 40 million liters of wastewater enters rivers and other water bodies with only a very tiny fraction that's actually treated. Now, if we are to crunch these impacts into numbers, uh, the cost of environmental degradation in India is estimated to be about 3.75 trillion rupees a year. And the health costs related to water pollution are alone estimated to be about 600 billion rupees. And most of this is associated with uh, diarrheal mortality, morbidity of children under five, and other population morbidities. Now, apart from this economic cost, lack of water, sanitation, and hygiene results in the loss of four lakh lives a year in India. Now, as a result, the water pollution has emerged as one of the nation's gravest concerns. Now, to address this problem, the Water Prevention and uh, Control of Pollution Act was passed out in 1974. It's commonly known as the Water Act. Now, the Water Act set up pollution controls board, both at the center and the state levels. Now, these boards, amidst all the other uh, activities that they do, they lay down standards of discharge uh, and treatment of effluents into water bodies for all people to follow, including body corporates. Now, anyone who violates these standards can be punished under law. 
Now, despite the presence of this robust framework, there exists a significant gap in how these policies are interpreted and implemented on ground. So this is the starting point for our discussion today. Now, parallelly, the nation is also witnessing the growth of new technological infrastructure to tackle water pollution. Now, in particular, local companies and groups have risen to the challenge of formulating very innovative and different kind of solutions. Also with, with new technology, new types of machines that allow for cleaner water treatment and distribution to the public are also rising up. Now, one such growing company is Green Water Revolution Private Limited. So it is an ecotech company that offers innovative and sustainable solutions in wastewater treatment, Pan India. So without wasting more time, I take this opportunity to introduce Mr. Yashwant Kulkarni, the founder of uh, Green Water Revolution Private Limited. So uh, Mr. Kulkarni, uh, he with a demonstrated history of working in the environmental services industry. Uh, he's a visionary and a leader in designing and implementing in situ bioremediation treatments in rivers and lakes. Now, being a very strong business development professional, Mr. Kulkarni has received several accolades for his work, the most notable being the execution of the largest in situ bioremediation project of 600 MLD capacity at the Budhnala in Ludhiana, Punjab. Furthermore, eco restoration of the Asi River and Varanasi that he led was awarded the first prize by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs in the Indian Smart Cities contest. He successfully led so many eco restoration projects of many rivers span India and is certainly a role model for the younger generation. So it's a pleasure to have you and we're very happy to have you here. The floor is all yours. We will start with your presentation and then we will follow it with a round of questions and answers. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. I think you're on mute if you're speaking. So maybe you can unmute yourself. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. So first of all, thank you, Mante, for nice introduction and. Absolutely special thanks to Sreyas and Pallavi for giving this opportunity. And uh, as you know, water is the basis for survival also. And uh, I don't think anybody can go ahead without uh, saying water each and every day, right from the morning till, the, till he sleeps. So it's very important and would like to go ahead with, say, part of this discussion with a presentation so that I will explain you how we can go ahead with the solutions of wastewaters with eco-technology. So these are the various rivers um, which we can see globally which are polluted. It's not only India or Europe, everywhere you can see the same thing. Pollution basically because of the fast urbanization and the pace of increased industrialization. There are various reasons actually why this happens, you know, because nature has got its own purification capacity, but fastest urbanization, uh, as she rightly pointed out, the insufficient. Uh, efficiency or treatment of the sewage from the sewage treatment plant, dumping of solid waste, again, industrial waste, and different use of land patterns. These are the various causes for the pollution. 
basic intention for us to you know we face these challenges especially of the greenhouse gases co2 and methane convention technologies use naturally electricity mechanical energies and chemicals to treat the wastewater and especially when we see this particular problem we thought of coming up with the engrafting of natural system to treat the wastewater so whatever the wisdom nature has given us that fitted into engineering we come up with this idea of eco technology to treat the wastewater basically if you see all this transportation of water and everything again requires a lot of fossil fuel like petrol diesel and all so as said we are going at with eco technology where we are considering all the engineering whether it's physical chemical or life sciences or sciences water sciences for restoration of water bodies so most of the people know that there will be two um, you know terminologies non point sources and point sources especially as compared or as specifically mentioned in the environment science so non point sources are rivers drains lakes ponds etc where your input conditions are not fixed it's open so whether it's morning time evening time you will see the rise in the um, flow again during the year in the rainy season or monsoon you will find there is a lot of flow increase or rather it is in multiples so challenges are much more in non point sources everything varies you know not only the pollution level but the flow uh, capacity then terrain uh, atmospheric conditions or uh, contours so we have to take into consideration all these points just for the sake of information i'll just play this video for a minute has its own purification system in place where it wants waste it's drastically reduced technology is an institute treatment of biologically produced taken from nature's own bounty to make different products which are used in our system to reduce pollution so there are various technologies for ponds for rivers for drains for lakes for the sewage treatment plants to be installed in buildings malls hospitals etc so this was a small uh, clip which we would like to show it to you so again coming with this technology for drains or rivers these are the way uh, as shown in the animation film also we fitting install this green bridges in zigzag pattern this is the j hook to divert the flow into this uh, green bridges and most importantly we will not use a single bag of cement to manufacture or to install this particular bridges it's totally totally econo uh, ecologically uh, maintained and these are the various advantages of eco technology we don't require any chemicals no machineries no electricity most importantly there is no generation of hazardous waste 100% order free that we can guarantee is the most important especially when it comes to the common person when it comes to the layman they are very keen about the visual effect so it's 100% order free mosquito minus absolutely not at all will be there it's very space saving because it's in situ treatment 
within the flow we can fit this particular green bridges and the system can be in operation within few months whereas for large stps for any city it will take at least two to three years for the documentation to prepare the tender documents um, boq etc and again additional two to three years to install commission the civil statement plan there is this can just complete it within say three to six months of span so short lead time fast return on investment and it's a single state process tailor made solutions so it's is the same system which we put in varanasi for the eco restoration of asi river so i'll just go through the case studies so can you imagine this is a green bridge this is the actual photograph of the budanala and the water is flowing through this absolutely no stinking and after seeing this only we got the order for the execution of assi river which consists with ganga so this is 600 million liters per day just imagine means rather india is our world's largest means with the eco technology this is another project at aurangabad you can see this is the income tax commissioner's office on the bank of the river what was the earlier stage of this you can see the color difference also and after implementation this is the view simultaneously we have the plantation of particular species to avoid the soil erosion also we do consider the flow of the river as well as the contours everything is taken into consideration but as i said we don't use any cement bank for the anchoring or development of these green bridges this is a very uh, you know interesting case of rasula bal uh, this person you can see in the saffron dress is a ex member secretary cpcb mr jd agarwal and the left side you can see the color difference when it converges with the ganga this particular order we got through ngo through shankaracharya this is another project at udaipur is a ayad river you can see on this particular photograph the green bridges the most important point i would like to highlight that in this particular case when we started it was absolutely uh, you know ppp model the jeel samrakshan committee over there helped us like anything they used to go to each and every village and whatever we understand was a like fireside chat uh, every sunday there was a discussions while having the tea at particular sarpanch or the local places and the awareness was created and these people helped us along with the chamber of commerce and industry to udaipur and when we executed this particular project initially uh, we were actually shocked you know we got a call that now there the color is red and we were shocked what has happened so we are doing something good for the society for the nature and what has happened but then we talked to limnologists we talked to some expert and understood that this myna has come up is a fish feed and then we could see huge increase in the fish population besides the shelf life and then after some days a sibling of crocodile also appeared means these people were telling after 10 years we could see the crocodile so is basically the ecosystem development of ecosystem it's not only the correction of cod bod which people talk about whenever it comes to wastewater treatment everybody is talking about only the reduction of the cod or bod level but here the success lies because the ecosystem is developed you can see this particular graph in 2009 the deposit for the fishing 
at the Uday Sagar Lake was just 2 lakhs rupees, which increased to 125 lakhs. So you can imagine the boost in the economy also. This particular river, when we started, it was absolutely dead. The BOD was zero, uh, right, sorry, DO was zero, which increased to eight within three months of span. Whereas if you go through the Thames River, it almost took 60 years for the restoration to increase DO from zero to five. So this is a success which lies especially with the eco-technology because nature has given it, we have to just interrupt it. This is a particular case of a sea river. You can see before the work it started and afterwards. At this downside photo, you can see the Kangwa pond where the Assi river originates. And there is absolutely no chance where you can see a drop of water. And there actually it originates. And now you can see where this Assi river gets confluence with Gangaji. Before and right side, you can see the transparency of the water also. At the same spot, you can see the step also. And these are the birds. This particular photo, which you can see, is of the Kanwa Lake, that Kanwa Pond. So, for us, what we can see visually with naked eye is more important. Development of ecosystem is more important than just the laboratory result of COD and BOD. Uh, I just add one more important, uh, you know, discussion when Planning Commission Chief of India. Mr. Kasturi Dangan visited our Udaipur site, which I showed it recently. So he was asking the neighbors over there that um, how and the farmers that how we can see that this water quality is improved. So those farmers said these cows and buffalo started drinking water, and for us that is more than enough. We don't want to check any of these laboratory results. And the small kid who used to prepare chai for our labors, hand over him a chai, he said, this is prepared with the water, which I took it from the hand pump at this location. Earlier, I used to go to one kilometer to bring water to prepare the tea for this particular labor. So I think this is more, uh, you know, for us, it's, it, it's, it's success than uh, getting a uh, particular award. Uh, there are n number of examples for non-point sources also. So, considering the time, I'll go ship to point sources. This is for domestic or industrial wastewater, wherein you get the fixed parameters when you are putting it for a particular hospital, for an industry. You know the parameters, you know the flow, you know the uh, pollution level, and you can design the system accordingly. Again, here. Uh, anybody interested will share the Monish will share you the animation film also. So here again we are going out with technology. So I'll share some case studies also. This particular which appeared in newspaper also, there is an environmental museum in the Ranasha of Pune Municipal Corporation at the bank of the worst polluted train in Pune, Ambiloda. Uh, we got the order through Director of Science and Technology and European Arctic and we lifted 50,000 liters of uh, water per day and treating it. And this particular water is used for the Sachin Tendulkar jogging track just opposite the museum. So this particular worst polluted water from the train is lifted and used for the irrigation or the Plant, uh, watering of the trees on the dividers. Now, this is again a good example. Everybody can see it. This is a sewage treatment plant, which you can see on the periphery of the playground. So it will just add the uh, you know aesthetic look also. 
and you can imagine a person purchasing worth crore rupees flat won't allow his kids to play if it stinks or if it is not hygienic and that is the guarantee that is the faith we have got in our technology we asked the builder he accepted he gave us the opportunity and we proved it and it working fine this particular photograph again is a resort which is again at the my background i know this particular place so just besides the stage where event takes place this is a sewage treatment plant you can imagine when it is called a resort it means is beyond something a hotel or a normal restaurant and there he could take a risk to have our sewage treatment plant at the site of the stage so this is the beauty this is one additional uh, we can say my brain child to have a sewage treatment plant at the public toilet because for gents it's okay but for females it's very difficult and you have to have public toilet which are clean and most of the time basically scarcity of the water makes it difficult to go into this public toilet and considering the man hours people are away from their home for almost 16 or 18 hours need of public toilet is 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 a must and there actually lies the success we are just putting this particular pulsed salske filter to treat waste water at its source so 80% water will be recovered and used for the flushing and naturally your fresh water demand will reduce and your load on the centralized sewage treatment plant will also get reduced these are the actual photographs of the side you can see just add adjacent to this public toilet there is a shop it's a she toilet in telangana you can see in this particular photograph this is a treated water tank absolutely clean this treated water will be lifted for the flushing and reuse so i think uh, i should cut short uh, thank you very much and you can always uh, go ahead with asking me n number of questions we can discuss for not only day hours months together because it's my passion to treat waste water it's not only question of business it's really passion to treat it and especially with eco technology whatever nature has given us would like to pay it back and especially with the same way they have given us so thank you very much thank you pallavi and shreyas and of course maitri for the introduction and now go ahead with the questions thank you so much sir thank you i think it's impressive to see the range of things and the breadth of things that you've been doing in different places uh i think even as as you keep innovating you also realize and you sort of retrofit it in different ways it's it's really impressive to see that uh so i have a set of questions but if there are any questions from the audience please feel free to drop it on the chat or you can raise your hand and uh, we will have the question asked uh so so we get started with a few questions uh so you already mentioned in your presentation a part of why conventional technologies uh Uh, sort of fail and how eco technologies can come in but to be more specific what i wanted to understand is what do you think are the challenges with conventional treatment technologies that are implemented pretty much widely in the country and where do you see an opportunity to integrate eco technologies within that existing system good question shall i start reading actually <laughs> this this should be reversed you know eco technology should be used widely and there should be opportunity for the conventional technologies to <laughs> penetrate you know this should happen you know because we have to come out of our comfort zone see whenever we go ahead with the technology we always try to have which is or which is suitable for our conditions our comfort see everybody is using uh, going through the showers so at this moment he is trying to have you know after day fatigue 
he's trying to have a shower but at this moment he is in a comfort zone he doesn't think of the environment he doesn't think of the usage he is doing so you can discuss at length but i think instead of opportunity for the eco technology it should be widely used and conventional technologies should be given little bit you know uh, help to treat the wastewater second thing is that if you see with this conventional technology huge consumption of electrical mechanical energy is there so most of the say developing countries or there are many places where there is a shortage of electricity for so many reasons rather if you see the huge thermal power plants require enormous water and they are on the verge of closure just because they don't get sufficient water so we have to use this water very wisely so i think you can see where the challenges lies <laughs> so, and uh, of course eco technology earlier it was not it was not widely used but now people realize that yes that is the only way we should utilize to treat the wastewater right so i think you you've touched very important points of huge energy consumption huge area of land that's uh, gone into conventional treatment and when we are at a time where globally we are committing to carbon neutral uh, yes. zero emissions and in that space i think uh, eco technologies make sense because you are trying to like you said rivers and lakes have their own self purification capacity so enhancing that using uh, different ways is is perhaps the best way forward i i really wish the switch happens very soon i'm too optimistic about that yeah but uh, i'll slowly spin my question here yeah. so normally private sector participation in water i mean water is a human right i mean we we, we see it as a fundamental right and it's a, it's a it's a matter of state and slowly we see that you know private actors are getting into the space for water treatment and dis not distribution but water treatment per se but again there's a lot of opinion that maybe the the involvement of private actors might not really look at equitable access and affordability of water once it's treated so do you feel that private sector participation has the potential to improve water treatment technologies while also ensuring that there is equitable access and people are able to afford that water if yes i mean how do you think if if you see that as a challenge then why do you see that as a challenge yeah, it's a really good question see technology no technology is bad or good technology should be adopted as per the site conditions as per the uh local conditions the state or the nation now as you said especially here the private sectors private companies are or throw the blue those are the people who come up with the technology there are few government organizations who do develop say culture or the treatment facilities or have a what you call prototype products developed but private sectors are basically working on this particular front and recently a trend is started that not only they should implement a project they should have at least 5 or 10 years maintenance which we were very keen you know because anybody can come in rope in his technology and just push up it may or may not get maintained irrespective of the quality of the technology and the efforts put in it may fail so nowadays there are policies like where 5 to 10 years maintenance is to be taken care of by the same party now there will be two issues one is technical and another commercial so technical techno commercially it has to be viable to get the contract so one has to have the technology at the same time he has to manage the capex and opex and here your question of affordability and access will come up so if one can give it effectively considering his technology with less capex or otherwise if at all little bit higher capex but absolutely zero or minimal maintenance then it will be affordable right i think that's very that's very that's very strategically said yes of course uh i think i'll 
I'll try and put another question. So we have several policies that are implemented, starting from the Water Act of 1974 to different tribunals that have been come out in place. But how do you see the effectiveness of the implementation of these acts? I mean, we see a lot of cases where there's there's obviously conflict, there's severe pollution, beat the Ganga, beat the Yamuna. I mean, they, they, they are severely polluted and there are policies and plans also in place. Where do you see what's the challenge and why is the implementation failing? I mean, based on your experience. Uh, it's a big question. Uh, uh, will require a huge time to answer this question, but I'll tell you uh, in short. First of all, implementation now is taking place because of NGT. There is a lot of pressure on ULBs, especially in India. And people are working day and night to restore the water bodies. There is a lot of pressure, absolutely. Means earlier we used to get very rare inquiries for the our technology, especially eco technology, because everything was engineered, everything was for the conventional technologies. But now we are getting inquiries because before, as I said, for the normal conventional STPs, it takes say four to eight years, depending upon the capacity and number of plants, and because people want to have the water pollution to be taken care of. This, our technology got a lot of potential, which we can complete within a short lead time, is getting a lot of inquiries. So there is a enough progress from the side of implementation also, and acts are now missed. They, they, because of NGT also coming into the uh, picture, you can see the pressure means earlier it was not, uh, you know, means it depends means how they take it. Because if you see throughout the world, environment is the most neglected sector. Means one has to accept it. Everybody talks a lot about environment. Everybody talks a lot about the pollution. But if you see anybody in the world, there will be a very less amount to be provided for the environmental uh, upgradation or the restoration of the water bodies. Mainly it will be for the infrastructure. So nowadays these people have come up with the different ideas uh, like a combo of those of these conventional technologies and eco technologies to go ahead with to take care of the pollution of the rivers and especially in India now they are penalizing uh, ULBs for non treating the drains which are confluencing with the rivers. So it's good nowadays. People are acting on it and there is a huge change in policies basically. Right. I think very, very rightly said uh, because off late, I think the pressure is a lot. People are getting aware and the need to innovate. I mean, like you said, uh, maybe about say 20 years back, we were still very comfortable into our conventional treatments. Yes, there's a common treatment plant. Yes, the water goes there, but we don't know how much of households are connected to that pipeline. And now a lot of things, like you said, we have global commitments. We have national progress that we need to make. So, so a lot of pressure is coming. I think that's, yeah, that's, that's very, uh, you've said it very nicely. I have two questions in the chat that I will, I will take on that. Uh, so the first one is, uh, how can we have manufacturing units manage their industrial waste, which is one of the major causes of water pollution? Have you seen any collaborating efforts in this regard? Yeah, very good and very important question, you know. Basically, because as I said, it's non-point sources and point sources. Uh, ours is the only company in India, or I can say in the world, who not only thought of, implemented a project to treat wastewater or effluent having 2 lakh COD to 171, which will require a huge electrical mechanical energy and nobody can thought of, but after years of experience, people gave us opportunity. We accepted the challenge. 
it was from a print media this print is very hazardous okay nowadays everybody is saying don't try to put it every mail you will get it unless and until it is required or it's must or otherwise don't print it but still people do believe in newspaper and all people get printed material and this ink is very hazardous so the cod is of the tune of 2 lakh which we treated with eco technology so not only the sewage but we can treat effluent very effectively with eco technology see basically it's nature it has got everything it has got a power only thing is that we have to find out the way and the way we try to manufacture the culture with the microbial culture is basically a consortia where is one's waste is another's food so on that basis we manufacture and as per the pollution level the severity of the problems we do manufacture we do take care of different sectors like whether it's a dyeing industry or textile industry or whether it's a automobile industry so print media so whatever i think answer is question i think so i mean uh, like you said adopting uh, eco technology as a part of their already existing treatment system is perhaps a way forward because if there is so much capacity to treat this kind of waste again industrial waste are are high in bod and cod and and depends on the kind of uh, uh, product that they produce so maybe yeah i think uh, that pretty much answers the question i hope alavi answered your question can i just add uh, one thing can i just add Yeah, yes, in, yeah. In industry, basically, again, uh, I'll just add one thing. Uh, it's not only question of process. Sometimes IT industries they have got a huge manpower, but no manufacturing process as such. Recently, I had one lecture at IGBC, Indian Green Building Council, and people attended and they were saying about uh, capex. How about your capex and opex? And uh, I said opex is absolutely nil or it's minimal. and then he said just come to a place have a visit at the site so i had visited his site found out he gave me the capacity and he asked me naturally the simple question because i was talking a lot i was talking big about the minimal opex and all he said what is your opex view i said your capacity whatever you have mentioned must be having 75 to 80 lakhs rupees maintenance cost per annum is it right so he said yeah absolutely it's 78 lakhs rupees per year i said fine so he said naturally the question most important what is yours i said max to max 7 to 8 lakhs rupees he said are you sure i said yeah absolutely no doubt of it i can put it in writing i can give it to you on stamp paper so he said okay is saying is american company he said okay we we'll go through the procedure now it's in pipeline and we we'll certainly going to get order so there they are going to revamp not the system they are demolishing the whole entire setup of earlier because return on investment is pretty high if they are going to save 70 lakhs rupees per annum you can imagine so i think the person who asked this industrial question thanks for it and i think you can concentrate both because there is a sewage generation so if there is a massive industry any atomara so not less than 400 500 or sometimes it's in thousands for when you see tata then ashok vela so you can take care of the sewage treatment basically so which will reduce your electrical mechanical energy everything you can have a combo treating effluent with the sewage and you can treat the effluent simultaneously so we are always open for this thank you So it's getting much better. Yeah. I'm sorry, sir. Did I cut you off? I think I. No, I, I actually I said sorry. You know, I cut it off, and I wanted to, you know, again add something to his question. You know. No, sir. So I think you're absolutely um, right when you say that it's not just industrial waste, but it's also the sewage that comes from these units. It's not just the manufacturing, mm -hmm. and how and how it's it's very interesting how. how eco technology can can look at every combination you can do it solely you can do it with conventional system so it's it's pretty much very flexible in that way and again very very cost effective for sure uh, so thank you pallavi for that question i have another question uh, which is um, 
how effective is eco technology in improving water quality along the banks like on the banks of ganga from kanpur to kolkata we see high concentrations of arsenic how effective is eco technology in reducing these yeah very good question we are working with uh, gangas namami ganga also and uh, do visit rather last week also i was in an mcg uh, on the banks of the river see if you see river ganga especially flows flows through five six states and everywhere the pattern is different means especially near kanpur there is a tannery industry uh, so it depends now where the question of arsenic comes in we have different microbial cultures developed for each and every uh, you know to take care of like manganese zinc and all and we have seen the reduction in this particular uh, what you call pollutants so regarding arsenic also we can certainly go for this now there is this nmcg they have a particular format you know they are going about with different <coughs> you know systems conventional systems as well as taking care of the ingresses different drains which are confluencing with the ganga okay so we have to find out whether it's a particular drain he is talking about or it's a small river and what is the length available because you know when it's coming through the city encroachment has literally um, we have seen the river expandings at some places you know it just disappears and again comes up so that is the level of encroachment and uh, so we have to take care of the all the parameters the contours levels and we can certainly take care of this arsenic also great i think yeah i hope that answers your question satyam it it well i think like like we've been saying eco technologies do have the uh, the flexibility to not just look at sewage but but also look at heavy metals and uh, inorganic and organic waste so i hope that answers your question uh, uh i have one more question shreyas himself has asked this question are there any apprehensions vis-a-vis -vis with eco technologies uh, i mean of course they have a lot of benefits do you see that there are any setbacks with the technology itself that sometimes can be challenging maybe yeah, first of all actually i am born and brought up as an engineer but <laughs> i am in this particular field but if you see everywhere uh, is the dominance of engineering naturally in this particular field and everybody is trying to have the infrastructure you know unless and until you see the machine running and the pumps and the gear boxes and all you don't feel like you know it is getting treated when initially i had my presentation these people said including the committee of the engineers and commissioner they said how come is just next to impossible water is flowing through this and it is getting treated it's just impossible but we told them that we should consider this as a health project not as a infrastructure project so if you look at the river and consider its health then you will realize what care we should take it's not only the infrastructure it's not only the capacity it's not only the investment would like to put in you should always try to find out which suits better you know allopathy you know what are the advantages and disadvantages but at the same time you know how homeopathy and ayurveda treats and now again internationally because earlier there was no way to monitor they don't have particular documentation it come through the you know our earlier generations nobody tried to put it in writing and can give a perfect solution but now we started documenting and trying to put it on a paper so we can certainly like we try to treat two lakh cod the way we can naturally have the documentation and now as you say as compared to allopathy homeopathy ayurvedic has a long lasting result this eco technology also has a long lasting results our sewage treatment plant at the asia's richest municipal corporation 
working for last nine years absolutely without maintenance in Pune Municipal Corporation, lifting the water through the very very worst uh, condition. Nala working continuously without any maintenance. So naturally, it's too sustainable, and we are treating it as, or we are considering this all this project as a health project, not infrastructure project. Right. I hope that answers your question, Chase. It's pretty much, I think the, the, the benefits are so much that sometimes you leave the apprehensions behind and go ahead with it. So, so I think we, we see the, we see what's more win-win for us. Uh, Kanishka has raised your hand. Would you like to ask your question? I mean, just in the interest of time, we can keep it short. Yeah, sure. I just have two gentle questions to ask. The first one being on the topic of rivers dying. Uh, there are many rivers which have seen death. For instance, even recently, Saraswati River was uh, on the news saying that it was dying. So is, is the, is the technology that you had uh, mentioned, the eco technology, can it help in reviving them back on the course and path as well? This is the only question or you had two questions? Yeah, I have another question too. The second question was regarding the Ahar River in Udaipur, the slide that you mentioned. There you had mentioned that after a long time, when with, by using this green bridge technology, uh, even crocodiles started emerging on the river. While on one side, we can see it as a positive. On the other side, the crocodiles can be dangerous to people living around there as well. So uh, while you use this technology and ensure that crocodiles emerge, do you also provide any technique for the safety? safety of the people living there? Yeah, very good question. Very interesting, you know. <laughs> now, the first questions I'll answer regarding Saraswati rivers and so many rivers. See, basically, it's not a river which gets polluted. Our urbanization, having the housing, habitat, or industries on the bank of the rivers, leaving all our sewage and pollutants, uh, effluents without treating are polluting the rivers. So if we are going to tap the ingresses, if we are going to trap the storm water drains, which were earlier, now got converted to sewage drain, then I don't think any river will be polluted. So we have to tap. It's not a question of river. You don't have to concentrate on that huge flow of the river is basically all the drains which are coming into that should be worked out. Regarding your second question, considering the time, I'll uh, now shift to your second question. But as I said, all the rivers can be treated with eco-technology. We have to take care of basically the total, you know, we have to consider the basin. It's not only the river. Where is the flow from which area it comes and uh, you have to consider the inflows and outflows and you should treat it. Now, second question regarding the safety. See, the basic question is whether you are entering into their territories or they are entering your territory. That's the question. It's not a question of safety. This, what we are trying to tell you is with this eco-technology, we would like to develop the ecosystem which takes care of the maintenance, the fishes, this all this culture, they take care. You know, if you see this water hyacinth, which you can see, it becomes sweet, but basically it is by the nature to treat, take care of the phosphate, take care of the sewage. But because of its dominance, it becomes single species dominance and it becomes a feed. But nature has given it to treat. Okay, so the safety, okay, we can see a number of snakes and all we have to take care while uh, working in the rivers and nalas and all, but it happens everywhere. If you have got a farmhouse, which is not a flat in the highly densely populated city, there is an equal possibility of the snakes coming in. Then where is the safety? You are trying to, you know, have the second home or try to, in, uh, uh, what you call, enjoy going into the resort. So there also snakes or everything will happen, you know, that will appear. So I think it's not a question of safety by coming the crocodile. I am just trying to find, telling you that 
ecosystem has been developed and it's a and they take care of their sense unless and until you harm them they are not going to come to you they have enough amount of food within the river itself and the outcome is basically because of the increase of population of the fishes in the ayad river they appear why they never appeared earlier in 10 years where were the safety that time where were the people that time people were there but fishes were not there so actually there was a problem in the economy problem in the food crop these people farmers could not sell their uh, stuff their vegetables say away from their places because it was not having that particular shelf life same with the fishes with this the economy got increased you can see that graph that fisheries tender development got increased to 60 times you can see it effect you know it's indirect effect you know and actually it should be considered while preparing the costing actually of any tender what are the benefits it's going to give socio economic effect i will add one example to her additional you know in hyderabad in medigunta lake we tried to restore the pond or this lake and there was a borewell inside and pe- people nearby used to drink water from that particular borewell because of the pollution these kids used to face a problem of diarrhea and naturally the serpent used to take all these kids because he is the only person who is having the four wheeler when we started the work naturally that fellow appeared and we were thinking you know there be the some problem is going to be but he said hat pau judta hu he said i bow down i will request sincerely that you should continue this work i said why what has happened so he said every day i have to take at least 18 to 19 kids to nearby place to see the doctor now i am going on my bike only one or two kids at the most are there so because of the treatment of this particular polluted lake you can imagine what has taken care of indirectly people could see it and recently we got person uh, at a wipros in um, bangalore and he was telling me we purchased a flat in in front of this and we paid a little bit premium to have this particular flat to have the lake view as such i said thank you <laughs> so it's not basically the question of safety we are entering in their territory and for this crocodile it's basically they have got enough food in this river so they will not harm you nor us also <laughs> i hope that answers your question kanishka and i think sir you raised very two important points on uh, why man and animal conflict happens either i mean it's we entering their territory that becomes a question of safety that's so rightly said and another thing that you very nicely said is how do you value ecosystem services i mean when you're costing you're costing the infrastructure you're costing manpower you're costing labor but you're actually we are not really costing the the services and the benefits that the the whole system is giving us in return things like biodiversity fresh air beautiful view this is not something that's still tangible you are just, we're still not able to put a value to it but again that's very important it's a very emerging concept which is valuation of ecosystem services of late i think not very popular in india yet but i think the concept is emerging so it's, it's i mean you put it very nicely i have one last question so we we just we just have one minute i'm very quickly going to ask this so as a representative of a youth network i think i'm very compelled to ask this is in this whole spectrum of government ngos the private actors and everybody where do you feel young professionals and young talent fit in in the whole spectrum and how do you feel they can be motivated to be engaged in this sector great absolutely you should you should come up with like anything uh, first of all now i think awareness is there because of this digital platforms and insta and all awareness is there they should come up with the vigilance they should try to get engaged with the auditing system they should try to be into innovation for the native system you know 
my technology or technology which fits in europe may not be suitable in dubai or middle east may not be suitable in us so basically environment is different you flora and fauna is different for each and every place whatever is suitable in south in india may not be suitable in meghalaya because we are working on both the grounds so there the contours everything is different the flow of the rivers is absolutely enormous it's pretty steep so you have to take care so i think you should come up with the innovation which fits into their locality they should think you know the word this word like uh, out of box thinking but really i mean it they should really think of local innovations technology which suits in their territory and i think that will give the best results than anybody on the earth you know means even if i get say n number of awards and all may not be suitable but his technology will be suitable for his particular area so one should think of it second thing is that each and every this particular you should try to have at least what i feel feel personally the balance sheet of their area water balance sheet see everybody talks about the accounts only whatever comes in and all your expenditures and what is your income and all if i think young generation do concentrate on irrespective of any city or local taluka jilla or any place you know whether it is in europe whether it is in middle east or not for his city he should try to find out which is coming in what amount of water whether it is available whether it's a rainfall whether it is you know what are the sources and what is the output what is basically the expenditure and if you can put it on a paper then i think you will realize how we should consume what amount it should be recycled and reused that's the most important thing and i think this you should take this wastewater on a priority basis government also should treat as a wastewater as the first source of water because of climate change rain may or may not you get the same quantity with the earlier years the patterns are changing a lot but wastewater it is 100% sure you are going to consume and you are going to generate wastewater so i think instead of looking for this rainwater harvesting or when rain is going to come and this patterns are changing and we are talking a lot about climate change we should try to concentrate on basically the wastewater and that should be considered as the main source of water and then you should consider that whatever the nature is being giving us and so if you recycle reuse wastewater i think you can have 24 by 7 water and you should try to concentrate for the native technology the most importantly the i think this will really work wonders if they go on having the balance sheet prepared for means now i think you are president of youth i'll connect uh, with you for giving some questions and try to have it globally you know for each and every city and if you can have a balance sheet and you know then people should work for as elements it's not only see nature is not it's is not somebody once property it's nature you know everybody has got a right we are talking about human right but <laughs> what about the environment so we should have right to use this water properly and um, i think uh, this young generation should work on it and vigilance they should take care of you know auditing the system you know it's not only question of getting the good technology they should also try to find out monitor it audit it what is the income what is the outcome what is going on whether what is been committed it's really true or not they should try to find it out they should document it try to put it into the system and try to give it to the you know government to apni the ek minute doctor la call so yeah sorry the day was little in hand so i think they should document it and put it on the common platform where governments also can see it you know 
everywhere it's not only india is middle east there are different uh, dimensions to this environment game where because uh, there are places where sea is there you can see the huge water but you can drink it so it's not a question of only availability of water it's a utility so sea is huge you have got a huge water resources but you can utilize it so i think these people should try to concentrate all young generation should try to concentrate on the balance sheet and if they work on this i think throughout the world we should have 24 by 7 water we should not depend on the basically the nature we should try to now it's it's our time to give it back to the society to the nature because till this years we are in our comfort zone consuming using it very lavishly in cities if you see the water consumption per day is huge whereas in developing countries basically there is a scarcity so they are trying to reuse recycle as it is so we should try to cut it uh, the consumption also and try to reuse recycle at any cost very rightly said <laughs> you've touched a lot of very well summarizes the uh, summarizes our discussion i hope if there are no questions then a bunch of things that that maybe what you said is is yes one size does not fit all i mean very very rightly you said i mean you cannot pick up one solution from one place and put it in another if, if the context is different if the geography is different i mean we've been living in a world where universal solutions have been given to different locations i think what you said is we rightly break away from that kind of a system and look at very local and native solutions and the other thing is also like you said data like knowing your facts knowing your region knowing how much rainfall is there what's your runoff and then how much is you i mean what's the consumption rate of the city making those balance sheets getting that data in place and then talking and then innovating makes a lot of sense it's it 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 i think it puts you on a check that you know you are not speculating anything you are giving the right amount of data for the right solution uh so i think you you bang on you you've hit the solution and then you go ahead from that so then there's no turn around yeah. and nobody is going to question the technology itself uh so i think we will if there are no questions so uh, very very nicely said sir thank you so much you've touched upon various things starting from water use water consumption water pollution and what do we do not just as professionals within this sphere but also at a personal level what is it that we look at and how do we want to go ahead in this space of formulating innovative solutions uh so thank you so much i will hand it over to pallavi now uh to just um, wrap the session thank you maitri and i agree with you it was i think a very a uh, learning session step by step learning for all of us a lot of uh, interesting discussions and i think uh, ashwin sir and his company is doing fantastic work so i wish a lot uh, more people understand the importance of water restoration water how important water is so thank you sir for coming today and thank you maitri for uh, moderating such a fantastic discussion so i wish everyone a good weekend and stay safe i know cases are increasing everywhere now so everyone stay safe and take care bye thank you thank you maitri thank, thank you thank you sir it's a pleasure to to meet you thank you take care and thank you monish Oh yes thank you Manish for this thank you yeah thank you for everything i think without you it would have been very difficult to formulate this session <laughs> take care i'll just end this thank you bye bye